What's up guys, Kudokun here, and today we're finally going to get around to finishing off Symphogear. Unfortunately, I'm cutting it a lot shorter than I wanted to, but I really underestimated how many sets were in Symphogear. I didn't think it was four, I thought it was two. So I'll have to put the deck profiles themselves on the back burner, we'll get around to them some other time, but I'm going to go ahead and finish off the whole Symphogear series with just the XD review. And then of course I still need to get around to the April Fool's thing, and <sighs> Oh boy, I sure did fall behind. But, as to not fall more behind, let's get started with the review. Man, I feel like a caveman. These cards aren't on TradeCardsOnline.com, so I've got to use the old Little Akiba Heart of the Cards method. And of course, the first card we're going to look at just happens to have a novel of text. It's really simple though, I'll break it down for you. First of all, she's an 11,000 pretty much all of the time. The only requirement is all of your characters are music characters, and that's probably always going to be the case. During the turn you put this in play when you attack your opponent, if your damage is not cancelled, then nothing happens. You don't have to worry about the text at all. If the damage is cancelled, then you brainstorm the top four cards of your deck and you look for cards that are either yellow events, hibiki, or miku cards. If you have at least one target this way, then one of your music characters gets plus one soul for the turn. If there's at least two targets among them, then deal one damage to your opponent. If there's at least three targets among them, then deal one damage to your opponent. This ability is just like Yosuke, so you don't have to choose one of the abilities. If you have at least three targets, then all three of the abilities activate. If you have at least two targets, then the one target and two target abilities activate, so on and so forth. This card's pretty good, because it makes it so that even if your damage is cancelled, you still have a way of getting two damage off, especially if you build around this ability and you guarantee that two damage is going to happen. An effect like this can be really good if you're using this in a deck with, like, say, the other level 3 Hibiki from the past set, because if you make your soul damage really high, then if the damage goes through, obviously it's great because it's a game-winning effect. And if the damage doesn't go through, then you at least get to pull this effect off and get two damage off regardless. At level 2, we've got another Hibiki in Gariu Ho Suencho Power Hibiki. Nailed it! Forgive me for sounding a little pleased. That was the first take. Here we see the introduction of a really interesting evolution of the Symphogear event pieces. Symphogear started out as just combo-centric, and then it sort of evolved into combos, but you also have some kind of downside if you don't pull off the combos, and this is probably my favorite implementation of it. Even though this card is naturally 5500, it completely changes if you have an Ignite module in your removed from play area. If you have at least two other music characters, as long as you do, this is a natural 10,000 that only costs one stock. If you do not have two other music characters and you have that Ignite module in there, then it gets minus 1,500 and goes down to 4,000. This is so interesting because it means if you pulled off playing an Ignite module earlier on and you play this but you don't have the other two music characters, having that Ignite module played actually hurts you because it lowers your power by 1,500. But of course, as long as you have those other two characters in play, then pulling off the combo of playing an Ignite module, then playing two other characters, then playing this character gives you a 10,000 for one stock. On top of this, something else interesting this card does is it changes into the level 3 from GX, which is just really awesome. And it's probably my favorite form of change in that if your opponent is front attacking you, then she gets to change. This is a really great deterrent, and you can play some really neat mind games with your opponent. Like, if you happen to have this in play, and you're getting the minus 1500 from not having two other music characters in play, your opponent's going to be more likely to front attack into this, but you could use that as a trap to set up the change into the level 3 Hibiki. So honestly, this card has no downside. It costs one stock. It's a potential 10,000. If your opponent front attacks into it, then you get to change into level 3 Hibiki, and since it goes back to your hand, you can just drop this again and change again next turn. It's beautiful. It's definitely worth being a card from the main character. Miku Somewhere to Protect is a level 1 that works really well in Hibiki decks, but of course it's got a novel of text that I'll have to summarize for you. It's a level 1, no cost 4500, and when it attacks, if you have at least two other music characters, it goes up to 6500. If you reverse a character and you have its Climax Senko in play, then you can put one of your music characters from the discard pile underneath this as a marker. 
Then during your opponent's encore step, if you have a Garyu, Geki, So Shoda Power, Hibiki, and this in play, even if they're reversed, that's a very important detail, even if they're reversed at the start of your opponent's encore step, if you have the marker underneath this, then you can get rid of both of those characters and change them both into their level 2s. This is a really interesting concept because the card that it changes with doesn't actually have a change. The, uh, oh gosh, uh, Garyu Daichi Shintoke. Daichi. Daichi Shintoke. Daichi Shintoke. Knowledge Hibiki. Got it, I think, right? Knowledge. We'll just call it Knowledge Hibiki. Anyways, Knowledge Hibiki doesn't have a changer, so this is a card that changes another card along with itself, and the card that this changes into is a card that works with Knowledge Hibiki. The only thing I'm not a super big fan of is it actually takes up a lot of resources to pull this off effectively because you have to run a very specific level 1 and level 2 line, and you also have to dedicate a lot of your climaxes to this and also the climax combo that goes with Knowledge Hibiki. So I guess if you don't really like the main Hibiki combo, or if you just want to try something new, or maybe even if you just are only collecting XD and not collecting the other sets, this could be a very viable alternative. Of course, being Simpho Gear, there is an event we're going to look at at the end of all of this, Heart Thumping Sudden Approach. Also, can we just take a moment to appreciate my unreal waifu dedication? We're not even talking about red right now, and I was somehow able to sneak a Chris card into this. I'm just saying, as far as waifu dedication goes, I'm pretty godlike. But anyways, when you play this card, both players put the top three cards of their deck into the discard pile. If your level one or lower characters is more than your opponent's level zero characters, then you get to draw a card afterwards, and either way you put this in the stock. Honestly, this is just a really good card all around. Probably a two of, I would say, in most of the uh, Hibiki decks that I would build personally. Because no matter what happens, this card is going to become one stock, which could be very useful, especially if you were getting really, really stock hungry at the beginning of the match. You discard the top three cards of your opponent's deck, and if you happen to discard a Climax, that's really worth it. And also, you get one card draw off of it if you happen to discard more level ones and zeros than your opponent does just their level zeros. I really don't know what else I could say about this. It's just a really good card. Here in green, we're going to start off with Carol, Wielder of the Four Elements. This Carol follows the exact same game plan of the Carol from the previous set, in that you need to get all four of the auto scorers into the memory by the time you hit level three and get this onto the field. It's much easier to do in this set, and we'll get onto that later, but honestly, the payoff you get this time is a lot better. This is a 10,500 that clock kicks every single turn if you can pull it off. If you're just running a deck with this, alchemy characters, and a lot of protection, this could be a game-winning strategy. It clock kicks, once again, every single turn. No stock, no climaxes, no nothing. It just gets free clock kick. <laughs> and when it comes into play, you can draw two cards and discard a card from your hand to the discard pile. I still don't think this really makes alchemy like top-tier material, but I think it's really fun if you like this kind of gameplay. Alchemy's not the only deck that got some love. Our good old Meme Lord's Noise also got some love in the form of Nehushtin Armor Fine. Ah, Fine. She is bringing so much more than just under boob and navel. She is actually a card that makes what could just potentially be a fun, not very serious deck into a deck that could actually win some matches and be taken seriously. So let's break this down. First of all, if you have no other characters, this is a 16,000, and that is important for a reason we will get on to in just a second. Her second ability is she has Bodyguard. Now, for those of you that do not know what Bodyguard is, because it's not very commonly featured in a lot of high-end decks, this is a card that if it's standing in your front row center slot during your opponent's turn, your opponent's attacks automatically become frontal attacks against this as soon as they declare them. That means your opponent can't direct attack your open spaces, and any of their side attacks get automatically redirected to frontal attacks against this character. 
Keep in mind, if this is your only character, this is 16,000. So every one of your opponent's characters is going to die during your opponent's turn, which is pretty funny. But Fine goes so far above funny. When this card attacks, you can pay 4 stock and discard up to 4 of your noise characters, and then deal damage to your opponent equal to the number of noise characters that you discarded. So not only does this card essentially attack twice, but you get to choose how much damage you're dealing, and if you decide to get rid of your entire field, then this becomes an 16,000 before the actual battle step occurs. So if this is an 8,000 and attacks into a card with, say, 12,000 power, then you can get rid of all of your characters, and all of a sudden, this is a 16,000 and is stepping over your opponent's character. But hold on, baby, we're not quite done. It doesn't state what position your noise characters have to be in for them to be sacrificed. So if you attack with this character after you've attacked with your other two noise characters and there were zeros or ones just to get some extra soul damage off to your opponents, then all of a sudden those characters that just reversed themselves, killed themselves off to get some extra damage are worth even more damage because you can sacrifice them off. Now, I'm not going to come out and say that this is like the best card that came in the set. I don't think it is. I think it's way more viable to run something like yellow-red or one of the more serious colors. But I think if you're going to run something fun and meme like Noise, it's really great to have this as a backbone so that you actually do have a viable strategy for winning. You can take the crazy amount of Field Swarm that Noise already had and transition it into a very, very powerful finishing move. If that's not enough for you, I completely understand, but it's enough for me, okay? And Noise is definitely the direction I would go in if I were to play some Faux Gear. Now, someone needs to get this up on trade cards, because I want my Noise deck now. Getting onto something a little more mainstream, we have Kill Juliet Power Kirika. She's a level 3 killer, and I think this level 3 killer is better than a lot of other level 3 killers that I look at. I'm really down on characters that are just made to kill level 3s. But this one's special for a couple of reasons. It attacks for two soul, and it also has super encore. So even if you don't get it for the level three kill and your opponent never changes and you never get to use its effect to give it plus 6,000 power, you can just use it as a two soul attacker that lives forever. Then if your opponent does happen to play a level three, then it's a 13,000 that kills a level three. Honestly, it's just a lot of utility. It does come with the downside of costing two stock, but honestly, that's just what you get for it being a better card. Finally, our events coming out to greet the master. If you are dead set on making alchemy work, then this is a must have at three or four copies. You have to have an alchemy character in play to play this card, and when you do, you can take one auto scorer from your discard pile and send it to the memory. On top of that, two of your characters get plus 3000 power for the turn. Now all of this for one stock is crazy, because it normally costs you one stock to take one of your auto scores and put them in the memory anyways, and they have to be on the field for it to work. But this one just lets you take any auto score and put it into the memory, making it a lot more consistent, and you get plus 6,000 power on the field, all for one stock, all starting at level 1. Very powerful card. I wouldn't say it's quite as game-changing as Noise got with Fine, but the combination of this and the new Carol actually make it a pretty viable strategy as well. Getting on a red, uh, you might see a little bit of bias here. If you don't know what I mean by that, just, just don't worry about it. That's fine. E.T. Valkris gives the character facing at minus one soul. You can discard two cards from your hand and pay three stock when this attacks to deal three damage to your opponents, and it's got a very unique form of Encore. For Chris's Encore, you can discard any red card from your hand, so it can also be a Climax or it can be an Event card, which makes this very useful because it means that the Event cards that you can't really use can also be used to Encore this. Now overall, this Chris is just a very consistently good card. It's not quite as explosive as some of the other cards in the set, but it's just good with absolutely no downsides. You don't need to have an event card in the memory. You don't need to have a special climax in play to use its effect. You just have to pay three stock, discard two cards from your hand, and it deals three damage on top of the attack that it already deals. And then of course it stays alive because of its encore effect. 
Its effect is so costly because it doesn't have any kind of requirements that you're probably not going to be able to do this more than once or maybe even twice a match, but honestly that once or twice a match that you do do it, it's going to be very impactful and probably win you the match. Fierce Maiden Knowledge Chris is a level 2 that costs 2 stock, and for each of your other music characters this gets plus 1000 power. It's a very simple effect, but this has the potential to be an 11,000 2 soul attacker that doesn't really require anything. 11,000 base with 2 soul on the attack, plus all of the great support that you get with the music characters? Honestly, this card could be a monster, and you don't even have to put that much into it. Mega Death Party Power Chris is not only a fun name to say, but is also a very interesting card, because if it reverses a character, you can move one of your other characters to the back row and rest it, meaning that it actually saves reversed characters. At only 2500 power, it's not like you can make super huge plays with this, but you can make interesting little plays near the beginning of the game. Like if your opponent attacks into you and you have a backup that makes this a bit higher than it's supposed to, then reversing that character actually gives you the chance to save one of your other characters. And of course, the synergy between this and a Suicider is pretty great, because you can use a Suicider to reverse something, and then you can use this to reverse a character and save your Suicider so you can Suicide something else next turn. Not a game-winning card, but definitely a card with some potential. The last card we'll look at in red is, you guessed it, an event card called Ultimate Parfait. But before we look at the card itself, I just want to say, I've been covering Weiss Swartz for a very long time now, and I've seen a lot of fan service in Weiss Swartz. But, uh, this card might take the cake as far as lack of subtlety goes. I mean, I was making fun of Rem wearing a mini skirt and a thong, but, I mean, that's a l- that's, um, uh, I don't know, it's, uh, oof, it's, uh, it's definitely something. And I just kind of wanted to point it out. If you don't have a Chris in play, you can't play this card at all, because I guess Chris is the only one who likes Parfaits. Discard the top six cards of your deck, and then add up all of the Soul Trigger icons, and deal that much damage to your opponent. Then on top of that, one of your characters gets plus 2000 power for the turn. XD Unlimited Chris just deals so much damage, it's a little obnoxious. If you combine this with GX, then honestly you could just sort of tap your opponent out by hitting them for damage over and over and over again. Uh, like, a Chris deck, just on its own, is capable of dealing 5 to 6 attacks in just one turn. Now, brainstorming yourself for 6 is a little bit costly, because if you get even one climax in that, that's kind of not worth it. But at the same time, if you do hit a Climax, you're also dealing extra damage to your opponent, so it's a little bit risk-reward. I wouldn't say that this is a necessary card for Chris decks, but if you happen to have some extra space, maybe splashing this in at 1 will make your last turn a little bit more explosive. And hey, because of the new Chris's Encore, you could just use this to Encore your Chris if you don't have another use for it. Jesus Christ on a crutch, what is with these names? Aono Isen Mepa Heart Tsubasa is our level 3 for blue. If you have two other music characters, this gets plus 1500 power, and when it reverses a character, you can put that character into memory, so great way of getting rid of Encore characters, but other than that, it's not really that important. When it comes into play, you heal, and when it reverses a character, you can pay one and discard a card from your hand to deal one damage to your opponent. The number might disappoint you a little bit because the other colors seem capable of dealing like 3 or 4 damage with their abilities, but honestly, dealing 1 damage makes this card very viable because sometimes dealing that 1 damage just for the safety of getting that damage to stick is very important. Unfortunately, I still feel like blue sort of got the shaft again this set and uh, didn't get quite as much as the other colors did, but honestly, just... Having a stable level 3 that can deal consistent damage could also be seen as a good thing. Rasetsu Zero no Kata Knowledge Tsubasa is essentially the exact same as the Hibiki we looked at earlier because it's a potential 10,000 that is a 4,000 if you have less than 2 music characters and an Ignite module in your memory. And also, just like Kibiki, it has some synergy with the GX level 3 in that, in this case, you can search your deck for the level 3 and put it into the discard pile. Now, for those who don't remember, the reason you would want to do this is because your No Need for Sword Tsubasa gets minus 1 level in hand if you have 2 or more of them in your discard pile, so 
by putting one in your discard pile, you can help get your No Need for Sword Tsubasa in play a little bit sooner if you have one in your hands. This card's not quite as explosive as Hibiki. I wouldn't say it's anywhere near as good. Honestly, I wouldn't say any of the blue cards are near as good as their counterparts in the other colors in this set, but that's okay. It had a time to shine in GX, and I think we just need to accept what happened. Still, though, it's a one-cost 10,000 that you can play off of an Ignite module and just have. Honestly, just one for 10,000 in any context is always going to be good. Alno Eason Dexterity Subasa is a really great utility card, I'd say, for pretty much any deck. If it direct attacks, you can give one of your characters plus 1500 power, so if you're playing around this card, you should be able to do that pretty consistently. And then during your opponent's turn, if this gets reversed, you can encore it for one stock, and then you get to attack with it during your turn, but the trade-off, of course, is that at the encore step, this goes straight into the waiting room. So those two things working in conjunction, attacking an open spot to give one of your characters plus 1500 power, and then your opponent attacking this on their next turn, you encoring it and then attacking with it again is really where the synergy comes from. It's a very interesting idea because you could potentially get 3000 off of this in terms of power and like two attacks, which is pretty darn good for just a level zero. Especially in the late game, if your opponent isn't keeping a full row of characters, then this could be a real nuisance because it gives you two attacks, and that's just awesome at level 3. It's not going to win you the game, but it definitely makes the ride a little bit smoother. The last card we'll be looking at in blue, and for the set, is Lady's Taste. It's a level 3 backup that, <laughs> you are not reading that wrong, does cost 7 stock. <sighs> I smell a gimmick! Now you guys know, some kind of level 3, 7 stock card I've got to take a look at, and this I'm definitely looking at out of interest and not because I think it's good. So what does it do? Choose two of your opponent's characters and they gain plus 7 soul for the turn and cannot side attack. What this essentially means is two of your opponent's characters are definitely going to have their damage cancelled, pretty much guaranteed. This is a really interesting idea in theory, but we're back to the first set Symphogear thoughts of um, they just didn't have the balls to make this as good as it was supposed to be. If this card costed like 3 or 4 stock, I'd say this is a pretty good effect because it takes one of your opponent's potentially game-winning turns and makes it so that you get one more turn than they do. But it doesn't reverse any characters, it doesn't punish them for having their damage cancelled by, like, dealing one damage back to them or something, which would have been cool. I really wish they would have added the stipulation that if your opponent's damage is cancelled, then deal one damage to your opponent. I think that would have balanced this card out perfectly. It doesn't reverse the characters that are attacking, it doesn't give your characters any kind of power buffs. All it does is it makes it so that two of your opponent's characters are definitely having their damage cancelled. It just needed something else. It needed to do something else besides just giving your opponent that extra soul. Because even if their attacks get cancelled, you're still going to lose a bunch of cards from your deck and be closer to a deck refresh, and you're not really getting anything off of it, especially after having to pay that 7 stock and putting 7 more cards in your discard pile that are probably going to end up as damage when you shuffle your deck again. I don't know. It was an interesting idea. I'm glad they had it here as just a neat little gimmick that you could do, but... It's definitely nowhere near as good as it should have been. Either lower the stock cost or make it do something good. And that's the end of XD. So what did I think? Um, some of my subscribers were saying that the leap between GX and the rest of the set and then the leap between GX and XD were it's definitely going to be two completely different things. And I definitely see where they're coming from here. I have to say that I don't hate the set. I think it's a very, very good set, but what I see mostly are tricks and gimmicks and ways to make what is already established run smoother rather than actually bringing anything new to the table. I'd say Yellow came out of this with the best deal because I could see some very nice things being added to Yellow. Um, I think Green's more gimmicky stuff got a lot better because Alchemy and Noise got a lot better. Uh, Red got some decent stuff, I guess. I could definitely see putting some stuff in the old 
red Chris decks, but I don't think it's enough to really justify putting a whole new deck list together. And blue, of course, got shafted once again by having the weakest cards in the set. And honestly, I can't really think of very much from blue that I would add to an already existing blue deck. So definitely nothing horrible, just not substantial enough to really change the entire meta for Simple Gear. But then again, I haven't seen a competitive deck for Simple Gear, so maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there was something here that completely changed the face of Simple Gear forever, and I just missed it. But anyways, that's going to be it for Simpho Gear for a while until we get to the deck profiles a little later on. We still have to do the April Fool's deck for Persona, and we're going to move on to next month's set. We have a very interesting little conundrum when it comes to this month's Weiss Wart set, in that in the vote that we had in the fan council, there was actually a tie for what set we were going to cover between Gurren Lagan and Konosuba. I was thinking of doing some kind of voting thing to figure out which set we would cover, but I've made an executive decision and just decided to cover Gurren Lagan this month. It's the set that I was going to cover originally last month anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and get to it. It's the newer of the two sets, and it's got some stuff in it that I really, really want to take a look at. So it's what we're going to look at this month. I hope you're as excited for it as I am, and I hope we can be a little bit more consistent this month. Stay tuned! Hey you, thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it if you left me a like. They help the channel grow and let me know that you want more of this kind of content in the future. The channel is currently being supported by these lovely folks on Patreon. You guys rock! If you have any thoughts on the video, of course leave them in the comment section below along with suggestions on what I should do next, but also answer this question to prove that you made it to the end of the video, if you feel like it. And finally, if you found this video by accident, then subscribe to stay up to date on the latest Kudo news. You can also hit the notification bell. Ringing the little bell will let you know when I upload a new video. See you next time!